Hello and welcome back to AmbiV. I'm Casper and today I'm going to go freeze myself for a test drive in the TR6. Now I don't know if you'll actually be able to hear anything I say once I start driving. The exhaust on this car is obnoxiously loud and the wind noise is going to be terrible. But I'll try to give a little bit of commentary. If it doesn't seem to work out, you'll know because I'll just cut straight to some driving footage. So I have two cameras going for this one and I'm trying to use a lapel mic to try to cut down the noise. So let's go ahead, fire the car up and see how it runs. you'll be able to hear me at all while I'm actually driving. So I'm gonna to try to talk right now while I'm going slowly because I've gotta get out of these little residential lanes and off the gravel. So the car has been put together for several months but hasn't been driven hardly at all. The suspension is really worn and the exhaust is a lot louder than we would have liked. Um, my dad likes the sound of the exhaust but I think that's because he probably can't hear all that well because it is really loud but it does kind of give the car some attitude, which is nice. Now, all the suspension being worn and the tires being old is definitely a problem. That kind of thing makes the car unsafe. So I won't be pushing the car very hard during this trip. I'll just kind of get it out, let it stretch its legs for a few miles and bring it back. If I don't think that the video is able to pick up the audio while I'm driving, I'll either just not talk or I'll jump to a section where I'm not talking so you're not trying to understand what words I'm forming under the sounds of the wind noise. Now, the last time I took this car out for a test drive, it actually didn't do too bad. I wouldn't say that it, it's a great driver. It needs a lot of things that would make it a reasonable car in my books as far as suspension tuning, fixing the bushings. It could probably use some uh, new springs. The springs are quite settled. Um, if it were me, I would probably also do some other maintenance items. I'd replace the tires. He has some old replica, like 1970s era tires with red bands on them. They aren't bad tires, they're older, but it's mostly the fact that I prefer high performance tires. I would prefer something like a summer ultra contact, like a extreme contact or extreme contact DWS if I'm gonna be out in the weather. Um, this car never sees rain. I don't have the top up now because I barely fit in it with the top up. And on top of that, putting the top up and down is a friggin' nightmare. Now, I hope the drone isn't going to completely destroy my microphones. The drone on this thing is ridiculous. Next time I have the exhaust apart, I'm gonna go have to wrap the header with heat wrap anyway to try to fix that problem but the drone needs to have like another resonator put in line. The way they do the uh, one to two split and stuff doesn't really help with the drone, even with the mufflers in place. need to remember this is only a four speed if I try to go for fifth I'm gonna have a real bad day in this car
this uh, with this exhaust, it does make it really nice to match revs, and you get some nice pops and bangs out of it. Makes you feel like you're going fast, even though I'm only just doing the speed limit. But coming into a few corners, you can really start to enjoy the car a bit. rather take a car like this out on a twisty road than the Viper. You're going to get a lot more enjoyment out of it. The Viper is going to be all one gear and you're going to be bored out of your mind. Or wrapped up in a ditch. That's a pretty cool truck. The temperature's still not up on this thing, so I'm just going to take it easy. I don't even know if it can get warmed all the way up with the big radiator and how cold it is outside. It's like high 30s, low 40s. Like, it's really cold still right now. We had the transmission rebuilt, so it's a little extra tight. Um, hasn't been broken in at all. There's basically zero miles on it, so I need to ease that in, too, and I'll probably have to flush this fluid here before too terribly long. Now, just in case the audio isn't working, I don't want to be out here forever and freezing my ass off, so I'm going to go ahead and just say thank you for watching now, and I'm going to drive the rest of this in peace and quiet.
popping and banging from the exhaust is just extra bad given the fact that it's so cold out here and it's such a wide open exhaust. Normally it's not quite that poppy. It doesn't sound like a Fiat Abarth all the time. just so that we don't deafen people. It does make the car seem a lot faster with this exhaust, I'll give it that. But I don't think, uh, I don't think my coronavirus beard really works with uh, the whole convertible thing. Once they finally end all the lockdowns and stuff, I'm gonna go ahead and have to get this thing trimmed up a bit. Get it back to driving. It's a nice truck too. Seen a lot of nice trucks out on this trip. The temperature on this thing's never come above the first mark. So I just don't think it's gonna get any warmer. I don't even think it's gonna turn on the electric fans. At least not unless this, uh, unless this thermostat is actually just wrong here on the gauge. quick test drive of the uh, TR6. I'll take this thing out on some mountain roads or something once I get it a little bit more dialed in and get you guys some just cool sounds of the exhaust burps and bangs and stuff as we go through some of the real low speed turns and do some multi, uh, multi rev match downshifts in quick succession and stuff. But uh, it is a really hard car not to like. I mean, it's ridiculous, but it's ridiculous in fun ways. If it were me, I probably wouldn't have spent the money to do this particular car like this. But then again, it's not my car. So who am I to say what people want and don't want? The nostalgia factor for the owner is more important than most everything else, and I can completely relate. I have a 10-year-long Z project, which has never really been finished because I can't keep onto one set of plans with it. And I drive a Mustang around getting probably 13 miles to the gallon as my daily driver. If you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comments down below. And as always, I'll see you in the next video.